In this video, we're going to dive into what it takes to get a very basic animation up and running with React Spring, and you're going to see that using hooks, it's surprisingly easy. So let's get going on this right now. Okay, so now let's get started writing our first bit of code. I'm just going to close out React Spring's documentation here, and let's get started writing our first spring animation. And this is going to be a very easy one. The intention here is just to give you confidence to keep going because what happens a lot of times with libraries, especially libraries like React Spring is, well, you get going, you try something, it doesn't work or it's a little confusing and you get stuck and then you don't want to use it anymore. So the intention here is to do a nice little slow easing in to React Spring so that we feel very comfortable. So we're going to import a couple of things. Now, the things that we're going to import first are going to be use spring as well as animated. And these are going to be from React Spring. Now, if you've used React hooks at all, uh, you'll know that, well, we need a function-based component here rather than a class-based component. Now, Create React App gives us this wonderful class app extends component, but hey, we don't need this thing. We want this to be a function base. Let's go ahead and remove component from our document. You know what? I'm just going to remove component from my life. To be honest, I'm just sort of using function based components constantly now. So we're going to say const app is equal to, and this is just going to be simply an arrow function like so. Let's make sure we delete that extra bracket at the end of here, and we should have a working application. Okay. Now we do need to have some space here above the return. So we don't want to have this automatically returning this JSX because we're going to be using our use spring. Okay. Now use spring is a really basic hook. Now the use spring hook is going to essentially create an object full of animation. And unlike other libraries and even react spring in the past, this isn't going to be just reiterating a value that it's going to be uh, looping over. And we'll talk a little bit about more about that. It's not necessarily super duper important, but it is sort of the foundation of how React Spring works. Again, it's not something that you need to dive too much into yourself. So we're going to say const and we're going to have some values come out of this. Now in the documentation for React Spring, they like to call everything props. And while this is fine, you're typically going to be having props already. So if you have something, another variable named props in here, it could really end up causing some trouble. So we won't be using that convention for this series. So we're just going to call this fade because that's all we're going to do. It gives it a little bit more, well, just it makes a little bit more sense to what we're doing here than props. That said, the naming convention is going to be something that is up to you here. It doesn't necessarily matter at this point because this value that's coming out of here is simply going to be an object with all of the stuff that we want. Now we're going to be using our use spring hook and the use spring hook accepts an object. Now inside of this object, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to say the starting value and the ending value. So let's say we want this to start at let's say zero opacity, we'll say from, and from is going to be an object itself. And this is going to be the actual properties we're going to animate. So we're going to animate opacity from zero. And then just like from, we can have a comma here and have a two. So we're going to be going from zero to opacity one. Okay. So just like this. So we should now have our fade here. And what's great about this is this is going to create our fade animation. In fact, if we were to console log this fade here, let's go ahead and console.log fade. When this component mounts, we're going to be getting an animation that goes from zero to one. Okay. So right now this thing isn't a transition. It's not anything special. It's simply just when the component mounts, this use spring is going to run. It's going to execute from and to, and it's going to do so based on physics. We check out our console, you'll see we get an opacity and we get an opacity animated object or animated value. And this might not be what you're expecting. In some other transition libraries, and like I mentioned, even React Spring in the past, you'd be getting all of the values here just shooting down from zero to one. But we're actually getting a animated value opacity. And if we open this up, you can see there's a lot of stuff in here. A lot of stuff that's not just a value. 
And you could see start position zero, value one, start time, last time, velocity. Wow, this is a lot of interesting things. So because of this, what we're not able to do is this will not work. What we can't do is we can't take our fade like you could in other instances, and we can't go to our app and we can't say style is equal to fade and have this just work. Because if you were to save this right now, absolutely nothing is going to happen. And that could be a bummer, but at the same time, once you understand what React Spring is doing, it's not just spitting out values, it should make sense that this wouldn't work, right? Because passing in those objects into a div like that isn't going to make any sense. However, what we can do is actually use the animated object that we brought in from React Spring. Now, animated is essentially just going to be a wrapper for divs and elements and components and anything you might want to use. It works with anything, styled components or emotion or any, any system that you might possibly want to use. Animated works with it, so don't worry quite about that. But animated, just like with styled components, there's a styled.div to get a div. Well, animated has these same things going on to get all of your HTML elements. For instance, we have animated.div and we can use that. Now, animated is going to give you some superpowers. What it does is it essentially takes the animation outside of React, meaning that React does not think about the animation values. This is really important because it gives us quite a bit of performance benefits that we wouldn't get if the animation was taking place within React. So if we do animated.div here, you'll notice that my ending tag updated as well, animated.div rather than just .div, and our style fade is going to be working in the very uh, next time we come here. So let's come here, let's refresh this, and we get a nice little fade. Now, for those of you who have really clung to duration-based animations, it might bum you out here that we don't have duration, right? We can't say, oh, this thing needs to take, you know, X amount of time. But don't worry, we can still use duration, and we will be talking a little bit about that. But just for this very first video, we are now up and running with our very first animated div using React Spring. So this has been pretty simple. But let's go ahead and refactor this just a little bit because uh, even though this is the first video and we're keeping it basic, React Spring gives us an ability to make this even more basic just to get us up and running. So we have this from and to. The cool thing about React Spring is, is they say, well, you're always gonna have a two, right? There's always gonna be an end state to this. So why not let's just go ahead and make this automatic. So if we don't have the two property and we just delete the object brackets around two, and just have opacity like this. So from opacity zero and just say opacity one here, React Spring is going to understand that we are going from zero to one. So this is a nice little change here. And you might be thinking, well, this is great. It's still like five lines of code or something. But this, honestly, this animation right here, this is an animation I end up using all the time. If you were to write this into like a one-liner, I actually think this is enough space to be a one-liner without being reset. Let's see. Yeah, check it out. So this little animation here can be done with from opacity zero to opacity one. We'll just say shorter, okay? And you can see that it doesn't take up a ton of space. We don't have to do all this stuff. But those of you might look at this as well and say, well, this is easier to read. And I totally understand that as well. So this has been really eye-opening because we learned a little bit about React Spring here. We learned that all we need to do to get an animation going is to use Spring give it a from and to state, take the fade property, throw it into a style tag, then make sure we're using animated.div. Now, fear not if you use styled components or any of that stuff, we will talk a little bit about that in the series at one point. It is a very simple process. We will even talk about how to make animated components directly within React Spring. So in the next video, we're gonna be taking this not necessarily up a notch, but we're gonna be talking about it in a little bit of a different way because right now we have a from and to state, but wouldn't it be cool if we could do a little bit more with it? Maybe control it, maybe have it fade in and out when you click a button. And um, this certainly won't be a transition or anything yet. We'll get into transition as well, and we'll eventually get into all sorts of things that React Spring has to offer, okay? So check it out. This is how you use a basic Spring animation in React Spring.